Entitlement reaches all walks of life, as you'll find out in this episode of Entitled People. Our first one is from Suzanne's Salty Seas. A cautionary tale of entitled behavior biting someone in the ass and it was not me. I had the seat 1A booked on both of my flights. Yes, I got a deal on first class and flew sitting in the first seat on the plane. I was thrilled. First flight, great seatmates. Second flight, problematic people. I got on, got in my seat. A few minutes later, a couple with a husband wearing a Berkeley sweatshirt and jeans and a wife dressed in designer duds got on and started immediately insisting I was sitting in one of their assigned seats. They had tickets for 1B and 1C and insisted that 1A was the aisle seat. I told them they were wrong, pointed to the signs showing which seat was which. They got the flight attendant, who confirmed I was in the correct seat and they were in the middle and aisle, not I. Copacetic, right? Nope. They started complaining to the flight attendants that I was too fat and I was crowding the husband. I may be fluffy, but I can fit in the seat easy on a regular seat much less these wide ones, and put the seatbelt on, and pull it some. I wasn't touching his rarefied ass. The flight attendants moved them, not I, to right behind me, so I ended up with a full, empty, three oversized seats. I made sure to stretch out all over all three and take the most glorious and petty power nap of all times. They moaned about how unfair it was, how I should never be allowed to sit near them. I should have been moved, etc, etc. This is why it pays to be nice to others, even others you don't particularly like much. They sat crowded in with someone else fluffy, ignored by the flight attendants while I lolled about napping. I take napping oh so seriously. I think they must have exhibited that same very bad attitude going through customs because I passed them having their baggage pulled apart and inspected while the customs agent grilled them. Karma is real. Still laughing thinking about it. You know, respect goes a long way and unfortunately you can't teach that to people that have grown up and lived their lives so long, just disrespecting everybody and everything that doesn't bend over and worship them. I'm glad in the end though they got their just karma. Maybe they'll learn to respect people going forward. This next one is by Don't Ask Me Chit. Next month, I, female, am going away on vacation with a longtime friend, female. We're going to the Caribbean for five nights. It's not all inclusive, so we will be responsible for paying for food, drinks, and any activities. She asked me how much I was bringing in cash. I said $300 cash, plus debit and credit cards. She told me she's going to bring $300 cash, but no debit or credit cards. She said she's on a budget and $300 is her limit. I explained that comes around to only $60 per day. This is not one of the cheaper Caribbean islands, so food and drinks alone won't leave her with much left over. I reminded her that she needs to factor in cabs, incidentals, and any activities we may decide to do. And you never know if an emergency will come up where she will need money. She says to me, That is why I have you! <laughs> and started to laugh. That pissed me off to no end. I tell her that we are both adults who are responsible for our own selves. It would be one thing if she lost her purse and needed money. I would flute her money before she even had time to ask. But to purposely use me as her backup ATM is not going to work. I told her now that I know what she's up to, I'm not going to go along with it. If she runs out of money, she will just be assed out and hungry. She needs to bring her cards with her for her own good. She is now telling me I'm too harsh and she will bring extra money but no cards. I told her do what she wants but if there is an emergency, she is on her own. 
If $300 is her budget, then that's where it should stay. Her budget shouldn't bleed into you if she exceeds that budget because you're there. No, she needs to be responsible and I'm glad in this situation you're putting your foot down and not letting her get her way. This next one is from Triple X Mavs Fan. I need to get this off my chest. As some of you may know, I'm a capybara farmer and recently, due to the viral trend around these amazing creatures, my peaceful capybara farm has turned into a hotspot for self-entitled content creators looking for their next big viral video. They've trespassed, they've stolen, they've subjected my capybaras to stressful, inappropriate behaviors. I'm deeply disturbed by their lack of respect and total disregard for the well-being of my animals, not to mention the breach of my privacy and property rights. But things escalated beyond belief. Just last week, one of these trespassers, a man looking for adrenaline-filled footage, decided it would be a great idea to wrestle a capybara. Not only is this incredibly distressing for the animal, it's also dangerous, and surprise surprise, the man ended up seriously injuring and losing part of his genitals. This man, the one who trespassed and harassed my animals, is suing me. Apparently he thinks I'm responsible for damage to his reproductive organs that occurred while he was illegally on my property and distressing my animals. A few days ago, I woke up to find my capybaras all huddled together in one corner of the farm, clearly terrified. Upon investigating, I found a person dressed in a homemade capybara costume, trying to live among them for a 24 hours living as a capybara challenge. It's clear there was some sort of sexual element. Not only had they trespassed onto my property in the dead of night, but they were also equipped with various props and toys that they had thought capybaras played with, a beach ball and a squeaky toy, amongst other less tasteful things. They were actively trying to coerce my capybaras into engaging with these objects and toys for their video, causing immense stress to the animals. When I confronted them, their response was shocking. They argued that they were doing the capybaras a favor by making them famous. They truly saw nothing wrong with their actions. I had to call authorities and have them removed from my property. The disrespect for private property, the welfare of animals, and basic human decency has been simply mind-boggling. The fact that people are going out of their way to trespass, and the fact that the guy got part of his nuts bit off, good. He, he didn't deserve to reproduce anyway, because clearly, he doesn't have a fucking brain in his skull to know you should respect other people's property on top of respecting animals. This next one is by Pizzanomics. I've been trying to sell this miniature portable washing machine on Facebook Marketplace for a few weeks. A woman we did not know at all inquired about it, and after we agreed on a price, she said the only day she could come pick it up was Monday. I told her that I'm 39 weeks pregnant and that I would be induced for labor on Monday morning, but that she was welcome to come pretty much any other time. She insisted she could only do Monday, as she had another appointment in town that day. I apologized and told her I had to be at the hospital to have my baby. She then proceeded to send me multiple messages back to back asking if my fiance could leave me alone at the hospital while I'm in labor with our child to meet her at my house so she could pick up the washer. I finally asked her if she was really suggesting he leave me alone during the birth of our first child just so that she could pick up this item and she got very huffy and said that she didn't want the washer anyways. How entitled does one have to be to honestly think that people should have to miss the birth of their child to cater to them? Literally, you have to be on another level of entitlement to even think that. And our final one is from A-Rod the Bad Man. Hey, entitled people, just had the most shocking experience with a neighbor that's left me furious and disoriented. I have this daily routine of walking my golden retriever Sam around the block every morning. Sam is my sweetest boy, full of love and always ready to play. His idea of a threat is the vacuum cleaner. 
not a living creature. Sam is the most gentle soul you've ever met, the kind of dog who loves belly rubs and fetch more than anything else in the world. He's also never hurt a fly, let alone another human being. This morning our peaceful routine turned into a nightmare. As we were doing our usual round, we encountered our usually reclusive neighbor, Mr. X. Now, Mr. X has always been a little off-putting, but what he did today was beyond my wildest expectations. As we passed by, Sam wagged his tail, trotting slightly towards Mr. X in his usual friendly way. Out of nowhere, Mr. X kicked Sam violently, causing Sam to cry out. I was shocked, to say the least. I yelled at Mr. X, warning him to stay away from Sam. In response, he started ranting about filthy animals, but then it got worse. He pulled out a handgun and pointed it at Sam. I was terrified, but there was no way I was letting anything happen to my boy. Without thinking twice, I put myself between Sam and the gun, shielding him. I shouted at Mr. X, trying to de-escalate the situation and attract attention. Thankfully, the commotion had drawn a crowd of other neighbors who immediately called the police. The police arrived swiftly and managed to disarm Mr. X without getting hurt. I'm pressing charges for animal cruelty and assault, and Sam's at the vet right now getting checked over. He's a little shaken, but seems okay. I still can't believe I had to step in to protect Sam from a gun-wielding neighbor. The level of entitlement people exhibit is simply horrifying. Anyway, just needed to share this. Please always keep an eye out for your pets. They depend on us to keep them safe. This situation is just fucked up and I really hope Mr. X sees some prison time. Not just for the fact that he assaulted the animal, but he also brandished a firearm and, and threatened not only the dog, but probably you once you stepped in between the two. I'm not against people's rights to bear arms, I'm not against the Second Amendment, however, in situations like this when somebody clearly displays they're not responsible with a firearm, they need to lose their rights. I hope Sam recovers from this and doesn't have a fear of people going forward. Alright, that's enough entitlement for the day. Well that wraps up this episode of Entitled People. If you liked the video, please drop a like, share my content on all of your social media, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to hit that bell so you're notified every time I upload, and drop a comment down below. It really helps with the algorithm and helps new people find my channel. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my patrons, have a great day and stay safe out there.